right. Well, here we are, Pastor Rod. Another session yeah. here on hey, the Lewis. nine spiritual gifts. How you doing? Great. Yeah, good. Thanks. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, last week you shared with us uh, the teaching on the word of knowledge, which is the second gift we've highlighted in this series. And so some great teaching there. Um, if you haven't watched that yet, um, you're welcome to go back, check that out. And But we're going to have a discussion today about this gift. Um, and so I want to start off, probably I will ask this question about each of these gifts, because um, I think it's one of the first questions people will come to is, how do I know I have mm. this gift of the word of knowledge? What are some, what are some ways we can know yeah. this, Pastor Rod? Well, obviously, knowledge is something we all have. So do I have knowledge? The answer is yes. Do I desire knowledge? Yes. This, this gift is like a, an extra injection somewhere here and there. And I think probably it will come up as um, a surprise maybe at first. Um, a little bit of a, wow, that was interesting. Like, hmm, I, I sort of knew something there or what, what happened there or just becoming aware that something supernatural just happened. Because these are supernatural gifts right. for Christians. These are gifts for Christians who love the Lord and are being used for His purpose. And, and all of a sudden, you know, it says that these are gifts from the Spirit. The Spirit gives us these gifts in order to love and help and but personally maybe also to um, guide us in certain things. So I think just by being aware when these moments happen is probably a good start to this like, wow, that was something just happened there. It was good. Mm. Or saying something and seeing a blessing on someone else and, and, and observing and saying, wow, that was more than I expected. Something, God just did something in their life through something I said, some knowledge I, I, I mentioned. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so off the back of that, I think sometimes, maybe especially this gift as well, um, maybe gets kind of labeled or boxed as, you know, this is for pastors. This is for, this is for church leaders. And unless I'm, you know, yeah. pursuing ministry, sure. um, maybe this is a gift that's not relevant <clears throat> to me. What, what would you say to that thinking? Well, 1 Corinthians 12 starts off and ends with the whole thing about the body, the body mm -hmm. of Christ. Um, these gifts are not just for pastors. I think if you're a pastor, you could pray for these gifts, each one specifically, and say, Lord, I, I need your help in everything, which is good. Let's get it all. But I think that, that the, key, the key words here is the Spirit gives, the Holy Spirit gives, the Holy Spirit decides. In um, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says, Now to each the manifestation of the, of the Spirit is given for the common good. Very mm. clearly, the gifts are for everyone. Yeah. Really, really, really clearly. We, need to, you know, we need to decide this right now. The gifts are for every believer who wants to be used by God. And that's encouraging. I think straight away we should say, wow, it is for me. And everyone listening here, you should be saying, wow, this is for me. Maybe, maybe not this gift, but one or two or more. I, I, I don't really understand all that, but mm. definitely the... The excitement and curiosity should be rising as we hear this this study. That's awesome. That's that's very encouraging for people to hear. I think because I think that is not clearly um, <laughs> shared sometimes. Um, can, so can yeah, I, can I just jump in on that again? Yeah, I think please. Sometimes when people operate in these gifts, um, it it can appear very high level, but we need to understand if they're pastors and leaders, maybe they've just got more experience and years behind it. Right, But when they started, it would have been the same as when we start. Mm. And so be encouraged, even if it's just a little bit of an a inkling or a, a desire, that, that's, that is the start. It's not a fully developed gift. It's the passion, inspiration, inkling, mm. gut level. And so be encouraged, even if you're just at the beginning, God can use you. That's great. I love it. Fantastic. Um, so last week, a lot of the examples you shared were around, very based around people, a word of knowledge of what someone was doing or what was going on in their life. And obviously that led yeah. to breakthrough and blessing. That's the purpose of, of the word of knowledge. But what about, can we get words of knowledge about, say, situations, um, mm. you know, for business people, market trends, what's happening? Um, what, mm. is, is this applicable in these areas too? I'd, I'd be very careful to answer this question because people mm. might make sure. investment decisions yeah. on, on, on this sort of thing. So I would say in, in my experience, it hasn't been 
like that. Right. However, in, in business, um, when I'm talking to someone, there has been a situation where um, God said, I felt, I, felt, I felt God say, when I say God said, I did not like this in my mm. ear, but just felt inspired to go in a direction that has really helped me in both sales and teaching and coaching, just looking at someone and coaching, whether it's in pastoring or whatever, and just saying, I just felt ask that question or go in that direction. Um, and when I asked the question, it was like, it just opened up and oh, that's interesting. So mm -hmm. yes, I think it can very definitely. Um, there's some other areas too, where sometimes I've been in a, maybe a dangerous situation and I felt the Holy Spirit say, don't do that or go in that right. direction. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a situational um, experience. Mm. Um, and then later realizing just how much that was real. Um, right. I've lived in a lot of countries, had a lot of experiences, and some of those experiences are actually quite large, which I may not share today. But um, mm. even in small things such as I heard of a, a friend of mine was talking about being um, on an off-ramp on a highway. Mm. And all of a sudden he felt God say, slow down a lot now, like like not just a bit, but mm. really. And just around the corner was a traffic accident and he would have come around and hit the car right? because you couldn't see it was a blind corner. Mm. Um, so I think the Holy Spirit does speak to us and will speak to us right. about situations, um, some things to bring breakthrough. So with the investor, I, I wouldn't rely on God to, to talk about whether the currency is going up or down or yeah. um, buy this stock now. Mm -hmm. Although I think if you're an investor, you will be researching that and having gut feelings. Right. Um, but that's sort of not the area. Right. Um, I think it's more in the area of both living and ministering mm. to people. Right. No, it's great. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's very <laughs> clarifying. And actually, I had a similar experience to your friend when I was a young I was, I think, 13. I was a young believer and I was walking home from school and I had headphones on, blasting rock music, and I was texting on my phone. And I was about to cross the road and it was a blind corner, the big tree on the corner. And I felt, I felt, I, I actually thought I heard someone yell, stop. And it gave me a fright and I literally right. stopped in my steps and a big SUV truck just wow. swung around the corner wow. and it would have, it, it would have hit me if I stepped out. So, yeah. um, that sounds yeah. like God right there. That sounds like God, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. There was, yeah. So you didn't know what it was, but there was a knowledge mm. right now. Take yeah. note. And, and, yeah. and, and then the yeah situation. And I think that's true that at the beginning of the word of knowledge, mm. you may not have clarity. Mm. but you take the next step in the mm. direction. So stop, look, and then aha. And I think this is true with the word of knowledge. Right. It's, it's really hearing the voice of the spirit, um, giving us knowledge about circumstances, situations, people, mm. our jobs. Uh, here's, here's another one where people realize that something has happened in their job and um, they mm. realize they've got to correct something or go back and do something. You know, it says in Proverbs to if you if you if you're caught out with your words, go back and fix it. And sometimes mm. that could be a word of knowledge in the night or somewhere like, I think I what I said could be misunderstood. I'm going to make that call right now. And I feel mm. that was a word of knowledge. Right. Mm. And the person says, "Oh, thank you. That thank you for clarifying." Um. So so this could come after the situation. Wow. And the Holy mm. Spirit said, "You need to fix that, or you need to fix this relationship issue, or um." Something you wrote needs a clarification. Mm. This is a bit of like re repair, isn't it? It's repair, mm -hmm. but when God's saying, hey, and, and that's happened many times. And, you know, sometimes you don't even know what it was. Like mm. you go back and you say, sorry, or I didn't mean that. And people go, that's fine. And right. it's not a clear picture mm. that it was a word of knowledge, but you just need a sense it was important. Mm. It was important that you do what God says. That's great. It. I feel I have a lot of those with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Repair moments. <Yeah. laughs> it's, called, it's called Oh No. Yeah. <laughs> the Oh No moment. Did I, did I say that? Did I do that? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's great. And, and then you followed through, right? You did oh, follow yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, and, most of the time, yeah. Okay. The times I didn't, it's not good, right? Okay. So. <laughs> and, I'm learning, you... I'm learning, getting wiser. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, so definitely more people focused um, than situational. Um, but what about, does that mean, can I get words of knowledge about my life, something that's going on, happening? Um, is, is, is that possible? Sure. I, I think we're really talking about the voice of the Spirit, aren't we? And, and mm. this, all these scriptures, the, the Spirit chooses, the Spirit gives, the Spirit mm. for the common good, but also for my common good. Um, just what you said about, you know, if you said something definitely, so it's almost like the, learning the voice of the spirit. Some people call it being in the school of the Holy spirit. Mm. When Jesus said the Holy spirit will teach you all things in, I think it's John chapter 14. I'm sorry if I'm wrong there, but I think, I think it is. And Jesus says that a few times when he comes, the Holy spirit will teach you all things. And I guess that's what we're talking about. The word of knowledge is, mm. is what the Holy spirit is teaching us. So it's in moments of reflection, thought, journaling, prayer, walking along a beach, um, doing the washing up. At any moment, God could say something. And this is part of the excitement of being a Christian, I believe, mm. is God is always wanting to speak and teach. And just let me say that when we hear God's voice, you need to know it's not a condemning voice. Like it's not, you idiot, what are you doing? but rather a father's voice um, or a friend's voice of Jesus saying, you know, Rod, that, that wasn't good or that wasn't helpful. This is better. So the voice is very mm. important that we recognize. It's not this pounding, you're a bad person. It's you need to repair that. You, you, there is a, there's a chance to change that. If you, you know, like, it's, it's really hopeful, redemptive, um, so I think there's a lot of personal stuff in answer to your question that, mm. that God will speak personal stuff, but it's sort of mixed with this voice of the Holy Spirit teaching us things. Yeah. Um, teaching us about if I was in, in, in my sales, teaching us about sales or mm. coaching or you're in um, online marketing or online, you're, you're helping a lot of people in that area. And part of it is all of a sudden getting knowledge about that industry. Mm. It's like, wow, I, I just... Well, why why wouldn't that be the Holy Spirit that mm. wants you to be successful? Wow, yeah. Because you are a child of God mm. and the Father wants you to learn and grow. Yeah. And I, I think that any person in business should be talking to the Holy Spirit every day. And right. say, you know, like Holy Spirit teach me today and and just on that note, I I still to this day, but I, I when I was a salesman, I would wake up and say Holy Spirit, today is another day I want to learn from you. Mm. And, and having that attitude, um, I, can, I can learn and grow every day. And as a pastor, yeah. um, early on saying, Lord, I want to learn about people every day. Mm. Now, the word of knowledge, I'm sure we'll, we might we will get to this. The word of knowledge is not mind reading. Mm. It's not knowing everything. And it's not knowing, it's not even knowing a lot about people. It's a mm. word of knowledge. It's a... Mm. Uh, a part that I need to know or that people needs to know. Um, so in sales or teaching or pastoring, learning every day about people, aha, I think God wants to teach us. Mm. Um, and there's a word in science called EQ. Uh, IQ is about mental and health intelligence, but EQ is about emotional intelligence. Mm. I think it's in this area. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think it's linked to this knowledge about people and, and marriage and um, children and mm. life. So this is a huge area, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And because it, it really is, it's, it's a partnership, is it? The Holy Spirit working in and through us. It's not, I think some of these people have um, this, you know, this thought, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit moving is like, you know, we're, we're, we're not in control anymore. We're being, right. we're being, you know, and it's nothing weird like that. It's this great no. partnership. And so I love what you teach on the Holy Spirit. I'm probably going to get this wrong, but the, the Greek word is, is parakletos. Is that it? Yep. That's it. Um, yep. The helper, the advisor, the one yeah. who's beside you where the yeah. word, the paralegal is that, that's the, yeah. the that's it is a, it's a paralegal from. word. And it was the person that helped you in court mm. back in Jesus or Paul's day. 
right. New, New Testament, mm. the one beside you in court saying, this is where you say this mm. or don't say that. So the picture is a law, a, a legal mm. term, but imagine that every day, the Holy Spirit saying, I'm, I'm your counsel. Mm. I'm here mm. to help you. Don't do that, but do this. And knowing that's that's on our side, Yeah. even if it's a hard word, like don't do that, Rod, it's, it's a mm. good word. Mm. Um, yeah, the word par- parakletos actually means the one called aside to speak to us right. on our behalf. Mm. And yes, uh, I think that's used three times of the Holy Spirit, the, right. the one who God's given us inside of us mm. every that's day. A- Wow, it's an amazing cool. picture, isn't it? Mm. It's very, very encouraging. So, love it. All right. Um, so, like you said, this is um, one of the gifts, you know, you've got to develop it, ease into it maybe, um, especially if you're, you know, some of the, you know, like Jesus at the well, it was a pretty bold statement, what he said to her in a, a quite a specific, and obviously that's a very high level functioning yeah. example of this gift so what are some ways that we can start to develop this gift without saying something crazy to someone that wasn't a word of knowledge and um, how can we yeah build up and ease into growing in this gift well we're well, talking about the woman at the well that's the story of jesus in john chapter four it's a mm-hmm. it's a whole chapter story so we can't go right through it but there was a couple parts to it where jesus came to a woman at the middle of the day drawing water and in the Middle East, that doesn't happen. Women don't draw water at midday. Right. So part, the first part of knowing there's a word of knowledge here was observation, um, that this is this something not, not in order here or something different mm. about this woman. And I think in life, the first step is observation. Um, yeah. And I would say to people, notice things. Notice things about the office, the people, the... Um, I don't mean notice to judge. I mean notice to just be aware, just be a, a participant in the room mm. and you know, aware in life, aware in the home. Lord, speak to me today. And I think Jesus observed her. He said, okay, there's something different about this woman. And then he engaged her. He mm. said, woman, would you like some living water? And got her uh, in conversation. And then when he landed on the word of knowledge, which is you've been married five times and the man you're with now is not your husband, was mm. truly an outrageous word of knowledge. It was yeah. like out of the ballpark, Jesus. Yeah. So I think you can't start there. Yeah. But where you can, can start is observation, being, being in the room, mm. wanting to help, noticing if people are in, in need or help and how can I help you? Mm. And then maybe like Jesus didn't, ask a question at that point. He just landed on it. Mm. But you've heard me say that I think when you're operating in this gift at our level, it, it's easier if you use a question. Yeah, great. So instead of just landing on it, saying, saying to the lady, are, are you married or is there, do you have any, can I, can I help, can I pray for you? So questions to get to the point. Mm. So I've said to people, um, if you feel I have a word of knowledge, don't just land on it. Just ask a question that's in the area. You know, how, how do you get on with your 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 your, your mom, or um, how, how did you go with that previous job? Or again, not to judge people, but you're you're moving towards bringing God's solution. Mm. And and obviously, I don't have all the information. Um, I just have a an inkling, but I'm moving towards the mark towards. So question out. Observation, participating, questions. And yeah. I think we don't ask enough questions. Mm. Um, actually, when uh, Jesus often answered questions with questions, yeah. um, he was the master question asker. Mm. And I think the word of knowledge, probably a lot of these gifts, uh, if we develop questions, mm. um, and the questions you ask, especially as a connect group leader, a small group leader, you'll learn to use questions, things like, uh, why did you think that? Or how did you feel when that happened? Mm. You will be learning about human responses. That's, and I think mm. those are the questions that help. How did you feel when when that happened in the office? And what did you think about that? Or why why are you thinking like that? And so engaging with good questions, mm. not like 10 questions I'm interrogating you, but um, just, just I, I've discovered if you love people, and are for people, when you ask good questions, 
mm. you almost always get a good answer. It's very true. Almost, almost always. Now, some people might block you, say, no, that's none of your business or that's fine. That, mm. that's, that's great. Um, but most people will say, oh, yeah, well, and, and actually you're engaging with them in a, in a good way. Most people will open up and you can say, can we pray about that? Or I was just thinking maybe this and that's the word of knowledge. And it just, mm. it just the person get either their, their face is shocked or here in Japan, off, often they get teary eyed, like not mm. tears, but like glistening eyes. And you think, okay, this means something. This is, this is important. Mm. Let's pray about that. And so observation questions. Very good. So, yeah, I love that. For all the note takers out there, if you want your three points today, observe, <laughs> engage, and ask. There you go. Oh, Great okay. stuff. Good, good summary. Very good. Um, just, I love what you said about we don't ask enough questions. Why do you think that is? Why is it hard to ask questions or why do we hold back? Um, I think two reasons. One is we haven't been taught how to do it. Mm. And secondly, I think in this age, we're scared of people like, I, I, what can I say? Um, well, they might say, Don't, none of your business. Mm. Or why are you asking? Like there could be a, a, a negative response. Yeah. I think the first one is we can learn how to ask questions. I gave you just a moment ago. Yeah, great. The, the questions you ask are what they call open-ended questions about mm. why, how do you feel, what do you think, very much in the arena of let's talk or mm. are you willing to talk? Yeah. Um, there are other questions that are just one line answers. Do you like this or not? Yes mm. or no. That mm -hmm. that's um so one we we can ask questions and I think again in, in connect group or small group, leading teams in church or teams in the office, you will see the response when you ask good questions. Mm. Um hopefully people will start to speak and you'll say, yeah. That was a good question. Oh, wow, that was a good question. When I was a young Christian, I was in sales mm. and I had to see doctors every day. That was my job. Right. Um, I learned so fast what questions were good and what questions were not so good because mm. you have experience. Mm -hmm. So I think you can learn. And secondly, if you're scared of people saying none of your business, um, just be their friend. Mm. I, I, think, I think just friendship is just going to break that down. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, I'm not talking about asking questions on someone's, you know, mm. Facebook or something, but maybe a DM, how are you today? I've been, you know, just um, personal line or, or personal mm. messaging. How have you been feeling about this about you today? I can honestly say in the last month, I've written a number of texts like that mm. um, where I just felt to engage. Yeah. Um, in one case, uh, a good friend in another country. Um, just said, really, you've really been on my heart. Can I, can I mm. um, ask, are you okay today? And the answer mm. was, having a hard time, thank you. And there was no reason for me to think about them. It just, mm. it just dropped in my heart. Right. So questions when your friends are, are, are welcome, should be. That's great. Yeah, I, 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 I very much agree. And I think questions just bring so much rich conversations and you learn so much more and like I said, most of the time people are, are happy to be asked mm. um the people mm. often aren't asked those questions like yeah. how are you really doing and um mm. and people are often uh it's mostly almost always a very positive response um to those questions isn't it so it, it really is mm. um I, I just think that, that as christians just loving people and having their best, mm. best interest not being a busybody, yeah. But just this, my friend, and I, mm. I just I want to be involved here. How can I help? Yeah, is almost always a good response. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, well, I when I ever talk when I talk to friends that I haven't talked to for a while, especially in other countries, and that I always love to ask, tell me what's been the best thing in your life since we talked, and what's been the hardest thing in your life. And wow. it's just amazing how much you learn about their wow. life. Um, with just two simple questions. I don't know where someone, I think, asked me what that once, and I thought, wow, that's really good. I'm going to start using that. Um, 
but it is i feel like myself included maybe me especially but people like talking about themselves normally (laughs) (laughs) and so when you engage with people and give them a platform to share about their life the good things the tough things and it is amazing how most people are very grateful and uh it can be very helpful and and in yeah. that, you're going to find these moments, right, to yeah. maybe share some some things yeah. that ends up being a blessing and, and a help and words of knowledge in people's lives. So, And I just want to encourage the, the, the Christian people watching this or the believers in Jesus is sometimes mm. God has given you an urge to say something and you don't. And then later mm. you think, oh, I wish I'd, well, you can just text or... So don't, don't, don't feel regret, you know, mm. just, just go yeah. back and say, hey, today when we were together, I was just feeling, how, you, how are you doing in this area? or Mm. so that urge um if, if something wasn't resolved or or mm. it, it wasn't put out there may, maybe do it later yeah it's go great. back and some might, some of you might be listening to that now and thinking you know i need to contact my mum about this or i need mm. to do that or it might i was be literally a- just thinking i've got someone i need to call after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one it's a good thing but yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's good, and, and, and the Holy Spirit's teaching you to, to listen to those urges. Mm. And, you know, sometimes I've done that, and the person said, no, I'm fine. Mm. And, yeah. and, that, and that's fine. I mean, yeah. we're all learning and growing in this. But that person also said, thank you. So yeah. even if there was a, like, a, like a what? But, well, thank you for thinking of me yeah. is, um, is a good response. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Well, I think this has been very helpful, Pastor Rod. I've learned a lot. I'm inspired again. And um, thanks so much for the conversation. But um, yeah, is any last thoughts, anything we haven't covered yet that you just want to speak to on the word of knowledge? I just just want to quickly go over one thing here. The Holy Spirit mm. is teaching you daily. Mm. And as you open yourself to that, Lord, speak to me today, teach me today. You're going to learn a lot more than you thought. Every single day is a learning day, a growing day with the Holy Spirit. So come on, let's really get excited. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Could you just uh, pray for us as we finish Pastor Rod? Lord, Lord, I want to thank you that you, you, Holy Spirit, you live in us, believers, and um, you're teaching us. As you said, Jesus, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He's the teacher. He's the, the uh, one called alongside us to help us, call to us. And I pray we'd learn to listen and obey and grow in our personal lives and in helping other people. And Lord, I pray if people especially have this gift, they will be inspired right now. They would be desiring to to pursue this. But all of us, Lord, are filled with some gifts of your spirit. And I pray Mm. we'd be hungry to know you and uh, you'd teach us every day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks, Pastor Rod, and thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, if you guys are enjoying this new style, uh, drop a comment, let us know. We'd love your feedback. Um, be blessed, guys, and we'll see you soon. See ya.